Hello YouTube! Welcome to episode 14 in my Digital Aquarium Controller series. We've made it to the final and most code-intensive portion of this Aquarium Controller project build, the website and data logging. Because of this, I'll not go over each line of code. Rather, I'll provide a link in the description to the entire code base. In this video, I'll explain what each section does, why, and how to install and configure it. From there, you should be able to modify it to your heart's content, or perhaps gain some insight into how to do something altogether different. For this, we'll use a few different software packages on the Pi. First, we have the Python script. This will handle the serial communication with the Adreno, parse it, and update local logs on the database. For the database, we'll use MySQL. We'll store the configuration data there, and we'll use PHP MyAdmin interface to maintain it. Web content will be served by the Apache web server. And the website will be written in PHP, using the skeleton framework to allow for adaptive scaling. PHP Graphlib will be used for the web-based charts, and the live data will be read from the SQL database. So first, we need to install and configure Apache. Run sudo apt-get install apache2 as in the instruction document. When that's finished, edit ports.conf to use port 81. You can use any port you like, or keep the default port at 80. Then install PHP using the command from the document. Now we should be able to test both the web server using the local IP and port 81 in our browser. You may also want to make a Hello World PHP page to test PHP. I'll show you how to make the page here, but we'll do the testing later. Now we need to modify apache2.conf to alias our source directory as apps tank www. This way, all the web content we might want to modify, both Python and PHP, will be in the apps tank folder. To populate apps tank, copy my content package out to the Pi and untar it. Restart Apache and test. This is good. SQL queries fail. We haven't installed MySQL yet. Let's do that now. Run sudo apt get install MySQL server as it's stated in the document. When installing, you set a root password. Remember what that is. You'll need it for later. Now I'll copy my mypython mysql db config.py file over to the python package folder. This helps when we set up a serial script to run as a service. Install the SQL connector for python. Configure SQL admin account in MySQL as a non-root user using the commands shown. This is the account that our apps will use. Now install and configure PHP MyAdmin to administer the SQL database. First we install it. See the document for the command string. Choose Apache as the web server. Say yes to create a default database. We'll add ours to this. 
Then provide the SQL root password that was created during the MySQL install for it to connect. And finally, give it its own password. Confirm and done. Now we edit apache2.conf to add the include parameter to run phpMyAdmin. Then restart Apache. Browse to the PyIP port on 81 slash phpMyAdmin and the interface should come up. There we go. Log in with the SQL admin ID and we have access. Okay, let's import the tank database. First, log out and log back in as root. Now, go to users and let's give the SQL admin account some privileges. Now you can log out and log back in as SQL admin. Create a new database named tank. Then select the tank database and click import. Find the tank.sql file and click OK. Here we go. The database tables are all populated. Let's take a second to talk about what these tables do. There are six log tables. These store historical data to be used for graphs. When the Adreno reports any P1 logging data, the monitor serial script picks it up and writes it to the P1 recent table. So this table stores the most recently reported instance of each type of event. When a row on this table is updated, it fires an SQL trigger to add a row to the corresponding table with the old value that's being replaced. That way we can easily retrieve both the most recent data and have a rest record of all historical data, organized into six categories. The current underscore conf table is used to store the last set of variable values reported from the Adreno. This lets us know what the Adreno is configured to do so we can display it on the web page. The saved underscore conf table stores the same variables, but the values are what we want them to be set at. These are fed back to the Adreno if it's restarted or if it's told to request an update and they're changed through the website. Okay, so on to the website. We need to edit sqlcon.php with our SQL admin password and save. Then also update sqlconfig.ini with the same password. This will let our PHP and Python scripts communicate with the database. With that done, let's test. I've already connected my test rig Adreno Mega to the Pi serial pins with the level shifter cable we made last video. The Mega has been flashed with the latest tank controller code and it's ready to communicate. So we just need to run our Python script to begin sending and receiving data. Running the script, we have no errors. That's great. Remember that at the moment we're just running it as a user, so we need to leave this window open while we test the website. Browse to the website and we can see we now have data. The first page, status, shows all of the most recent data, as pulled from the P1 recent table. You can see here that the lights are on, the moonlight is off, the temperature is a tad over 80, so the heaters are off and the fans are on. The info error page here shows us that the last time a reset was triggered, and the last time we updated the clock, along with the last manual interrupts triggered from the Nexteon display touchscreen. Any errors received will be listed in the right panel. These are pulled from a text file on the Pi, p 4 underscore the Charts page displays the charts made with PHP Graphlib. Each chart is loaded with an image, and the selected boxes let you select which ones to display. More work is needed here, and a new page will be need to be made for each chart. A dynamic date range is needed, and if there are more data points that can be displayed, it fails. Hence the error here. However, I have some spider images used just as stand-ins, just to demonstrate the function. On the Settings page, we have the current config and we have the option to change any setting. Click Request Current Config sends a command out to the Adreno to report back the current values stored in Adreno memory. At the bottom left, we show the last time that the values were reported back. At the top is displayed the current time on the Pi and the Adreno. The Adreno time is reported every second and monitor serial.py stores it in p3 underscore in dot text to be displayed here. Clicking Update Time causes the page to send a command out to the Adreno to update the RTC time with the current Pi time shown. And finally, each setting may be updated on the Adreno by selecting the value and clicking Submit. This triggers both a new setting to be sent to the Adreno and an update to the saved config table. To verify the setting is in place, click Request Current Config to see the current values. The Control and Devices page are for future use, and they don't do much yet currently. 
Control will send a command out to the Adreno to perform a specific function, similar to the manual override buttons programmed into the Nextian touchscreen. And devices will be used as an interface portal for other tank controllers, such as some small ESP8266 based ones that I plan to build soon, and perhaps a webcam or some other such devices. Okay, now that we know how it works, we just need to configure MonitorSerial.py to run as a service. MonitorSerial.py is the backbone of the Adreno Pi connection. It handles all the inbound and outbound serial communication to and from the Adreno. Every two seconds it looks to serial underscore out dot text and sends this to the Adreno. So, from PHP, if we want to send a command out, we just write it to this file. Monitor Serial will pick it up, send it, and clear the file. Received data is parsed and processed based on the type of data. P0 commands are used for a handshake and are overwritten in P0 underscore in dot text. P1 commands are written to the P1 underscore current table in SQL. P2 commands are written to the current status table into the P2 underscore in dot text file. P3 data is saved in P3 underscore in dot text. And finally, P4 errors are saved in P4 underscore in dot text. To make this run as a background daemon that starts if the pi is reset, we need to demonize it and register it in rc.d. The monitor serial.sh script helps with this and is already included in the package. So, first we copy this script to etsy init d and give it run permissions. Then we update rc.d with the default settings and enable it in syscontrol for startup at reboot. A quick check shows that rc.d perimeters are updated, and that's it! We're ready to start it. Run sudo syscontrol start monitor serial to start it. Now we can verify that it's running at any time with syscontrol status monitor serial. We can see the fork in our python file and that it's running. A quick check of the website confirms that the time is being synced, so reads are all working. Clicking request current config does a send, a receive, and an SQL write. If that data comes back good, it's golden, and it does. All aspects are in place. We now have a Raspberry Pi based web interface and SQL database linked to serial to our Drino Mega Aquarium controller. It's been a long journey, but we're ready to put this in place. Please share any suggestions or questions in the comments, click like and subscribe, and until I see you next time for the install, thanks for watching.